Hello everyone, this is Hakim Abiz. This time I'm going to talk about dynamic NAT configuration on Cisco router. Uh, the first thing, uh, of course, we need to access the router, the NAT router, which is supposed to, which is a router that's going to perform the translation between the inside local IP addresses to inside global IP addresses. So this router, I will open this router for configuration, go to the command line interface, and then I need to uh, specify uh, the interface. For example, I will access the serial interface 0 slash 0 slash 0, this interface here, and configure that interface to be in the uh, connected to the inside network. Also, I will go to the second interface, serial 0 slash 0 slash 1, and I configure this interface to be connected to outside network. After that, I need to specify the following. I need to build an access list access list number one for example permit uh, IP address 192.168.0.0 with a wildcard mask 0 slash 0 slash 0 slash 0 slash 0 slash 255 uh, I will need to add a second entry in the access list number one of course this is a standard access list okay I add a second entry now um, I will perform the following I will do the following comments IP NAT. Now I can see the command inside, inside source list. Now here I specify the static the access list number, which is number one. This is what I choose here. One. And then I'm going to define a pool. And here I give the pool name, my pool, for example. My pool. Now all the source IP addresses coming from inside network will be translated into IP addresses available in defined in this pool. Now I'm going to define the IP addresses in the pool or my pool, IPNAT pool, what is the name of the pool, my, my pool, and then I specify the starting IP address which is 196.15.60.100 uh, for example, I can start from that to 196. 110. For example, but be careful, you need to have enough uh, inside global IP addresses, so you might increase this uh, the range. Um, well, I need to specify also the subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0. Uh, now I finished building my NAT configuration. I go back to the running configuration and see what happens. So I have the serial interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 which has been configured as an inside interface because it is connected to the internal network. The serial interface 0 slash 0 slash 1 which is configured as an outside interface because it is, con it is connected to outside network. And I have my uh, NAT configuration here which says that all the IP addresses, the source IP addresses coming from inside network and following this access list number one, and who are permitted by access list number one, needs to be translated into inside global IP addresses as defined by pool named my pool. And this is a range of IP addresses that will be used as inside global IP addresses. And of course, this is my access list. So in this access list, it permits all the hosts, internal hosts with these IP addresses from 192.168.0.1 up to 192.168.0.254 and all internal IP addresses 192.168.1.1 up to 192.168.1.254 as specified by the wildcard mask. Now, again, we need to go to the outside router and configure a route entry in the routing table of that router because if I type here the routing table, if I display the routing table, this is what it displays. It displays only the, com the connected network. So it knows how to reach the connected network or connected segment, but it does not know how to reach the segment uh, 196.15.60.0. So I have to enter this route table or the route entry in the routing table by using this command IP route 196.15.60.0 subnet mask. And uh, for I'm using the uh, serial interface 0 slash 0 slash 1, so all packets will be sent through that serial interface. Uh, 
0 slash 0 slash 1. Right, I go back again and display my routing table. So all packets destined to this network address should be forwarded through the local serial interface 0 slash 0 slash 1. Now, moment of truth, let's check what happens. I go to PC0, I call PC0, um, I need to access the web server at address 212.0.0.1. Does it work? Yes, it works fine. Great. I go to the second network. I do the same. Desktop. Go to web browser. Launch my web browser. Start 212.0.0.1. It works. It's okay. Now to PC1. From, from PC1, I should be able to perform or to access the FTP server. So I type a command FTP followed by the IP address of the FTP server. It's fine. Username, Cisco, password. And then I type directory to display the files in the FTP directory. And then I will finish testing access using the last host in my internal network. Uh, comment prompt FTP 2.12.1.1. Username Cisco, the password, and then display all files in the FTP server. So everything works fine. I go back to the NAT router, and here I'll try to display show IP NAT translation or the translated table, the, the NAT translation table. And as you see, inside local IP addresses have been translated into global IP addresses using TCP protocol at the transport layer when, when accessing these uh, outside IP addresses for either web server for, uh, for either web access or FTP access. So this table is very easy to understand. Okay, so it works fine. So the, um, the thing with the, the difference between dynamic and static is that in dynamic you don't need to have the same number of uh, inside global IP addresses or let's say uh, public IP addresses to map with every internal or inside local IP address. So with global IP with dynamic netting you just you can have for example um, a pool of IP addresses let's say that might be shorter that might be uh, uh, smaller compared to the size of the uh, of the private IP addresses in the internal networks. Now, each time a host from internal host wants to communicate with an outside network or with an outside server, that host will have a, its source IP address or the packets that it generates will have a source IP address translated dynamically uh, using an inside global IP addresses on a first count, first served basis. So you don't have to have always the same uh, inside local IP addresses map it to the same inside global IP address you, this, this should not happen uh, all the it should not happen actually but on the first come first served base so whenever it comes and if that inside if there is a request for translating an internal IP address into ex ex external IP address or public IP address the first public or inside global IP address available will be map it to the uh, internal IP address for the sake of communicate for, for establishing communication between internal network with ex and external networks. This is the end of the presentation. Uh, I will see you in my next talk about how to configure port address translation. Thank you.